Hello everyone, today we're going to be returning to our React on Rails app. This time we're going to be working on the new post form. So when we go to our post page, uh, wherever that is, when we, when, we, when we click on the create new post button, I'd like it to take us to a form that then allows us to create a new post. Pretty simple stuff. So once again, we'll come over to our GitHub page, our repo, we'll click on new issue say uh create or well, i don't know new post form and then we'll do something like it'd be cool to have a new post form again not the most professional issue that i've ever written uh, but it gets the point across we'll come down here if i scroll in a bit we'll click on create issue you can also assign it to yourself if you want to and give it a label uh, maybe a feature label would be a good thing like new enhancement or feature and then we can come down here click create branch we'll say yeah this seems good uh, and then if I full screen this, hopefully we can see the create branch button and we can click on the copy button and come into our terminal, paste that in, just hit enter, and then we'll be on our new branch. So that's pretty cool. If you're wondering how I'm doing this with the Windows terminal, I learned about this today. Uh, if you hit, uh, what is it? Uh, control or alt shift minus or yeah, alt shift minus opens up a terminal below. Uh, and then you can hit control D to exit out of the one you have focus. You can do alt shift plus to open up a terminal to the right. Uh, the only thing is they don't open in the directory you're currently in. So you then have to copy this and then you can CD into it. And then we can CD into the client here. And now we can have both windows open at the same time, which is gonna be great for these videos. So we'll start in the Rails app. In here, I'm just gonna quickly run a Rails S to start our server. And then in the client app, I'm gonna quickly run a npm run dev to start our uh, client app. So we can now refresh our API. We should be able to see our posts and we can come over to the Vite app to see our actual application again. So we have the new post link right here, but of course this only takes us to a new post page, uh, but there's nothing actually in here. So let's come over to our client and our SRC and then our features. And then in here we have our post features, right? So in our post features, what we want to do is create a new component. We'll call this the new post form.jsx. In this new post form, uh, we kind of just want to do some basic stuff for now. So let's say function new post form, and then we'll just return uh, some parentheses. And in here, we'll just do a div that says new post form, and then we'll close this div. And then down here, we can do a export default new post form, oops, new post form, and then we can get rid of this hopefully. And this should now be fine. Now, if we refresh, of course, nothing's gonna happen yet because we aren't like actually using this component. So we have to figure out where we want to use this. Now, last time we created a uh, little tool for this. Uh, so maybe you remember what that was, but if you don't, that's okay. We can come over to our client SRC, and then we have our components. And then in our components, we have the app routes. In the app routes, we have this new route, which right now is just rendering this new post form. So if we change this text to like the word test, this will change the test. Instead of doing that though, we can just do what we did up here, except instead of using like the post details like this, uh, which is just gonna say loading right now, we can change this to the new post form, which means we're gonna have to import this. So we'll import the new post form from our features post new post form. And now you can see that text has appeared there. Now, uh, I, there was a comment about importing React everywhere. The reason why I'm doing this currently is because you're, if you try to test these before we get to the video on testing, uh, your just tests are gonna tell you you need to use React. So for now, I thought this would be better. I do have a better solution that doesn't require you to do this, but part of writing code is refactoring. So I thought it'd be a good lesson to just come back and refactor this later, just as like an aside. But okay, let's come back to our new post form real quick. Uh, and then in here, what we wanna do is uh, have a couple of things. So up here at the top, we're gonna say, we're gonna use title and set title. These are gonna be use states, which means we need to uh, import our use state from React. We are also going to be using the navigate again. So we're gonna be using use navigate. Uh, and then the last one we don't import yet because that's a spoiler, but we can start right here with a const navigate equals use navigate like that. Now, all of these are gonna throw warnings right now because we aren't actually using any of these. Let's come down to our return and let's just start building out our form. So we'll change this H1 new post form to be an H2 that says create a new post. We can then create a form which will have a on submit. And this is just gonna say on submit handle submit. Now this is gonna be a function that we have to create. We're not gonna create it right now. We're gonna finish making this form first, uh, but it's just so you're aware. 
We can then come in here and we can say we need a div. So I'll hit, oops, I'll hit tab. Hopefully the autocomplete I have running doesn't ruin it. And then in here, we're gonna have a label. Now we're gonna use a label that has a HTML for the title input, uh, because if you don't have this, you're gonna run into some issues when you're trying to test with Jest again. Just putting it out there, we're building some of this stuff ahead of time. Unfortunately, I, I can't be bothered to refactor this, so it looks like we're just building this out from scratch. Uh, then we're gonna have our input. Now our input's gonna have a couple things. The first thing is an ID, which is our title input, which matches our HTML4 that we have for this input right here. It's a type of text. It has a value of title, and then on change, it has a event set title e.target.value. So on change, it's just gonna set the uh, value of this input field uh, to the uh, title uh, variable we have up here, which we're using with our use state. So that's gonna be stored in here, and then we can access this with our title. Pretty simple stuff. We can then come down here and we can say, all right, we need another div right here. This is gonna be for our submit area, right? Uh, and then in here, what we can do is we can say we have a, uh, or uh, sorry, this is for our body, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, and then this one's gonna be a text area as opposed to a text input. So that's why we're doing that. We have our value of body on change. We set the body, we say this is required, and then we close this. You don't have to make these required, by the way. That's totally optional. We can come outside of this last div, and we can do one more div, which we'll just say is for our button type of submit that says create post, like that. Now, if we save this, you'll see nothing's happening right now. And part of the reason for that is, uh, if we come into our console here, we should be getting an error saying handle submit is not defined, which is this function right here. So let's go ahead and let's create this. To do this, we're gonna have to do a const uh, handle submit. Although you can also just do a function handle submit, totally up to you. I'm gonna do it like this, uh, handle submit, just because it's what's in my notes. And then we can worry about refactoring later if we feel like it. We can do this. And then in here, what we'll say is, first of all, e.preventDefault, because we don't want this to redirect. We can then um, probably go with what it has here to some extent, but I need to refactor what I have in my notes. So what we'll do is we'll say const response is equal to an await or a fetch to the API URL, which does mean we're gonna have to import that. So let's come up here and let's import the uh, API URL from, uh, and it looks like it's in uh, dot dot slash constants.js, I think, or just constants. That should be fine. Let me refresh this page. So that seems fine. Now for our response, we don't want to just fetch this, right? We want to fetch the uh, API URL with a comma, and then in here we need our braces. We want to say this is a method of post, a headers needs to, because we're using Rails, we always need to make sure we're passing a application JSON when we do something like this. Uh, otherwise it's gonna be upset with us. And then we can do the body, which will be a JSON.stringify on the uh, title and the body. But what I'd actually like to do here instead is have this uh, take in some like post data. So when we do this, I'd like to have, uh, let's say up here, a const post data is equal to the title and the body. And then I'd like this to stringify the post data instead. I think that's a better way of doing this probably. So this gives us our, uh, our response right here. What we can now do is we can uh, close this and then we can say, all right, after we do this, we want to check if the response dot okay. So if the response is okay, we get the ID from our response dot JSON and then we can navigate to post slash ID. Uh, and then we can come down here or I guess we can come right here and we can say else the response wasn't okay. We can just say an error occurred uh, and then you should be fine there. And then uh, I think at this point we should be good. So let's go ahead and let's try this. But again, I'm trying to refactor this on the spot. Uh, so let's see, we can come in here and we can say test and case. I will hit enter in this window right here so we can see the Rails server when we do this. Uh, so we're running into a error here with a 400 bad request because a parameter is missing. Uh, param is missing or the value is empty for our post. Uh, and I believe the reason for that is we have our post data right here. We don't need these braces. Should be good to just use the post itself. Let's try this again with a test and a case. Hit enter, click create post. So now we're getting a different error, but we can see right here, uh, started our post. We actually insert it into our database with the title and the body. Uh, but then we get down here and we run into an error with a completed 500 internal server error because we have an undefined method post URL for our API. So this is where previously I said we might run into some issues. So 
This is waiting for a response, which is why we're running into an error, but in our actual controller here, up in app controllers and uh, our API, our post controller, when we do a create, it's trying to render at post. Now we can't render at post. We can't uh, render the uh, at post because we uh, are now in slash API slash V1 slash posts, right? So we need to actually change this, or at least change how this is working. So what we're gonna do instead, if I hit F11, is we're gonna change this location right here. So I use GitHub Copilot, but uh, hopefully you can forgive me. So we have our JSON for our posts, our status of created, which that doesn't change, JSON of at post, status of created, but our location now goes from the at post, which is just taking us to like slash post slash one, to the API v v1 post URL for the at post. So it's a little bit different, but by doing this, hopefully we can now come over here. Let's refresh, hit enter a couple times. We'll say, hello world, testing, oops, testing, one, two, three, click create post. And now you can see after this happens, when we come in here, we do the same thing. We insert into posts, all of this stuff happens. And then it says started git for slash API slash V1 slash post slash 23, because we're now going to API slash V1 slash post slash, and then the ID for this at post. So that's one thing you need to be aware of when you change the scope like this or the namespace, uh, the, the locations will sometimes throw some errors, but now we should be fine. We can see up here, we've moved to uh, localhost port 5173 slash post slash 23. We have it right here. We can go back to our posts. We can see right here, uh, we have our testing one, two, three, one right here. So that's working just fine. Now, I think in the last one, if I'm not mistaken, we did do, um, let me check. Uh, we did do a component in here in our client, our SRC features. We have the uh, post details right here, which should be our post show page, which is what allows us to go to slash post slash 23, right? So what we can actually do is we can come into our post list, which is what we're in right now. And in our post list, we should uh, be able to change this a little bit to maybe give us a link to uh, the the post itself, right? So we have our H2 for a post title. Let's try to refactor this a little bit. So at this point, I should say, we should probably stop our server. We should do a git commit. We should merge in this PR for a new post form. And then we should do another PR or another branch where we change this to have a link. Uh, so maybe I should do that so I do best practices. So let's go ahead and let's do this. We'll say git add dot uh, git commit dash M and I'll just do a commit message that says implemented new post form. Go ahead and do this. And then we can do a git push. That'll push it up. We can now come over here and refresh. Uh, and we should see in our code that we have a new branch. So let's go ahead and compare and pull request. We'll pull this into main. I won't put anything in the comments. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll merge this pull request. And because I'm not putting anything in the comments, you would expect if we come over to our issues uh, for the issue to still be open. But because we opened the branch directly from the issue, it automatically tells it, hey, uh, we've we've addressed this issue uh, based on this pull request. But okay, let's now come in here, let's do a new issue and let's say uh, change index page to have links to posts. And then we'll say, uh, let's change the title for the posts so they link to the actual post when a user clicks on them, something like that. Again, assign it to whoever if you want to, give it a label for a feature enhancement. Uh, and then we can go ahead and submit the issue. We can come in here and we can say, all right, we need to create a branch for this, create whatever it's called, create branch, copy it. You've seen this all before by now. And then we can come down here. We want to do a git checkout. Let me actually hit F11. We want to do a git checkout for our main branch. We then want to do a git pull. That'll pull the new changes that we just merged into our main branch. And now we can do the commands that they gave us to fetch origin and then check out and then we should be good to go from here. So that will automatically update this one as well. You can see this one's also on the seventh one. So that's good. Let's do a run dev. Over here, we can do a Rails S. So let's go ahead and let's implement this feature real quick. Uh, we can say we have these, these H2s right here. Let's change these a bit. So to get started, we're gonna need to import a link from React Router DOM. Remember, we already have React Router DOM because over here in our app routes, we're using it for our routes. 
So we'll import the uh, link and then down here we can say, all right, we have the post title. Let's, let's keep that. I love that energy from you. Uh, but instead, let's do something like this. Let's say we want a link to equals and then we want this to go to our slash posts slash and then we want the post ID. And then we can say this also should have a class name equal to post dash title or some CSS later. Then we can grab this post title right here and we can put this in here and then our H2 can close this off again. So that's going to give us hopefully a link. If we come over to our app here and refresh, you can now see uh, if I come over here to our root of our application and I full screen this, we now have these links here for hello world and test and hello world. So these are all the titles. If we click on one of these, it'll take us to the actual post and then we can click back to go back to the post index page. Again, this is something where like for Rails, this is probably built out of the box with a scaffold. You might have to do this link yourself. But for a lot of this stuff, you know, when you're working, you don't get to choose your tech stack. You don't get to choose what pays the bills uh, to some extent. You just have to, you know, deal with it. But I think this is fine for now. So let's go ahead and let's commit this. Let's do a git add. Actually, I'm going to come over here and stop this server. Do a control D to close this, hopefully. Uh, control D again. I'll do a git add dot get commit dash M and I'll say added link to titles. Then we can do a git push. We can come over to our GitHub page again. And for one final time, we can come over to our code. We can do a compare and pull request. And then we can add this, do the PR. And then we can scroll down and merge this as soon as it's done. And then in the next video, we can look at either editing or deleting a post, depending on which way the wind's blowing and how I feel that day. But for now, I think this is a good place to stop. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.